Northern Sumatra in Indonesia is home to Lake Toba, the world's largest volcanic crater lake. The region is the only place where rhinos, orangutans, tigers, and elephants coexist in the wild. Historical records indicate that Sumatran benzoin resin, used in incense, perfume, and medicine, has been harvested and traded by the indigenous Tano Batak people since the 8th century. Amid a national push for industrial development within rainforests, the lives of the Tano Batak people took a dark turn when Toba Pulp Lestari, a paper company, began to destroy their biodiverse forests to build eucalyptus plantations. All of the people in the village experienced the severe decrease in benzoin production, and they knew it was the impact of the presence of the company. We used to have 50 kilos of benzoin resin after harvest. Now we only have five to 10 kilos. In the past, we'd go to the forest for bathing, washing our clothes, and drinking water. The company uses a lot of chemicals, so we got rashes and other terrible health problems. Deeply concerned about the well-being and environments of these indigenous communities, Dalima Silalahi knew that she had to get involved to protect their territory from encroachment. I felt it was really important for me to be part of that struggle because it affects me as part of the Batak culture. The benzoin trees only grow in this area. That's why I felt the responsibility to be part of that fight because it's part of me. In 2013, a precedent-setting court ruling created the opportunity for Indonesian indigenous people to claim legal stewardship of their traditional forests. Dilema and her grassroots organization, KSPPM, developed a plan to use the law to protect Sumatra's forests. They set out to map the territories, educate locals on the new law, and form a campaign with villagers from six Tano Batak communities around Lake Toba. Since the beginning, it was women who participated and initiated this strategic struggle. Why? Because there's a close relationship between women, the earth, and the land. They want to maintain the land not only for the current generation, but also for the next generations. With the destruction of the earth, the burden of women increases. When our lands and forests are being disturbed, Batakis women feel that we will be most affected. So, that is why we are ready to do anything about it. Dilema ensured that women's voices were heard all the way to the highest levels of government. Their monumental efforts lasted nine years and included media outreach, workshops, marches, and tree planting. They made their case to, and enlisted the support of, government officials, including Indonesia's Minister of the Environment. The situation in the forests is worsening. That's why I am seriously pushing the process of tree planting, so that at the end of the year, 100,000 hectares of land can be covered with new forests. When we gained the support and guidance of the Minister of the Environment, we felt confident that we would succeed in fighting a big corporation like TPL because our constitution guarantees the rights of indigenous communities to be acknowledged and protected by the state. In February 2022, due to the community's efforts and support from the Minister of the Environment, the Indonesian government granted six Tano Batak communities legal stewardship of 17,824 acres of their traditional forests. I was so happy, feeling that I was not alone. There had been a time when our movement to stop TPL felt like we were walking down a lonely road. But the general public finally saw the destruction that happened in the Batak forests, and some of our land rights were restored. For outstanding environmental achievement for islands and island nations, the 2023 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Dilema Silalahi, North Sumatra, Indonesia. <laughs>